2019, 70,630. 2020, 69,839. 2021, 67,331. And 2022, 60,101. Those figures mean over 10,000 pounds per annum bill for the gas at this house. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I improve energy efficiency and cut their gas bill in half. The heat loss of this property is slightly over 20 kilowatts. And based on that, the energy use of this property should be below 40,000 kilowatt hours uh, per year, provided the whole of the property uh, is heated to around 21 degrees C. We went through the data and the data shows that uh, in the winter period, they actually use 260 kilowatt hours per day, which is just, it's, it's huge, it's insane. As I mentioned before, the heat loss of the property is 20 kilowatts, which means that when it's minus two outside, we need 20 kilowatts of power to keep the property at 21 degrees. We've got 230 kilowatt boilers, so we've got 60 kilowatts available. That's another inefficiency on the heating side. And in here we are above the plant room. That's the main system pump. So that pump, I'm gonna keep to do underfloor heating throughout the house. And in here, there's my secondary circulation. So this is the biggest offender of the system, depleting hot water cylinders continuously. Normally, I would convert the system into what's called a hot water priority, where, where the boilers fire separately for heating and separately for hot water. But in this case, I think I'll do something else. So I've turned the hot water on to see which zone valve uh, controls towel rails and underfloor heating in bathrooms. And by turning hot water on, I've realized that every single manifold, every single zone valve, every single pump comes on. Look, four of those manifolds in the whole house. The pump's running. Because the hot water was programmed on two hours a day, they didn't notice that underfloor heating was running as well. And that's where tons of energy was getting wasted. So this cylinder is empty, fully isolated, but it can be brought back to service if needed. So I've got two separate systems now on boilers when it comes to pipe work. Two small, well, one small sealed system for hot water, one much larger for heating. So I'm gonna separate them electrically as well and install one of these single channel programmers to one one boiler on, on hot water. So I've got it pretty much all figured out now. Just have to run power to the programmer and then power to the pump above on the ceiling. So I'm in the middle of putting a weather sensor outside, but it's already running as a very crude hot water priority setup. That boiler runs at 50 degrees doing all underfloor heating. This boiler runs at 70 doing hot water, completely independent. And outside right here, this is my external sensor, nicely tucked away in a shade in an alleyway. So that sends the external temperature back to the boiler and the boiler decides based on this temperature at what temperature to fire for central heating. So once you play it with that dial and you get comfortable in, inside temperatures, in theory, you no longer have to go to the boiler as the boiler will uh, change the flow temperature depending on the outside temperature. So the colder it gets outside, the higher the flow temperature going out from the boiler. With 12 degrees outside, I've got the boiler running at 40 degrees C. Those temperatures well over 90% efficient on central heating. While this one will only kick in for about 40 minutes a day to recharge the cylinder, even if it has to kick in at all because we've got seven kilowatts of solar PV on the roof. And we've got uh, Eddie here. And Eddie's actually right now charging the cylinder. So I'm gonna set the gas boiler on this programmer only to kick in in the late afternoon for about an hour. And it might be the case that if there's nice sunny day, that boiler won't kick in to recharge the cylinder at all because the eddy, uh, the solar diverter will take care of all of the hot water needs. You see those manifolds? There's four of them at the property and they are controlled by standard mechanical Honeywell thermostats and there is 15 or 16 of those. The only uncontrolled areas with no thermostats are tower rails in bathrooms and they run off flow and returns to those manifolds. What I've noticed, I've turned every single thermostat at the property off. Everything's off. 
and the boiler is still running the pumps are running on every single manifold and every single zone valve to every single manifold is on so the bathrooms are getting hot what has happened is the only thing that is on is the hot water programmer because everything is run from one programmer uh, and that programmer used to do hot water and heating now it only does heating because I've got my another programmer here for hot water as soon as you turn the programmer on for heating it fires the boiler it fires all the pumps on all the manifolds it opens all the zone valves although not a single zone is calling for heat that's another manifold in another part of, of the house you can see the pump is still on and the only thing that those little Honeywell thermostats control are the actuator heads on the manifolds they do turn the zones off but they do not stop the boiler from firing in the middle of tracing those wires and the only relay on the system I can see is here by the boiler so I'm gonna have a look at it hopefully this is not wired correctly or faulty and backfeeding to all the other pumps and zone valves also there is one zone valve here and that's only wired with a uh, brown and neutral and earth relay is bypassed on it is not used so that zone valve is really not needed there and there's one zone valve doing two manifolds on this floor another zone valve doing two manifolds on the first floor so uh, if there was a zone valve on each manifold I could in theory use those relays to bring up the boilers and the pump and keep existing wiring and uh, make sure the thermostats are able to fire, fire the zone valve and the boiler but because I only have uh, two of those and there are two missing and I don't have enough wiring I have to do something else so I've got my new controls new thermostats that will allow me better control of underfloor heating I'm also installing one of those wiring centers per manifold so there's there are relays between pumps and switched light to the boiler so if one manifold calls for heat through this wiring center it will separate all the other manifolds so that nothing not everything will come on at the same time it's three o'clock got one wiring center done three more to go half of the day took to go through all the wires mark them and see what's what so that was the longest process it's half past five and it's time for a what electricians call bank test So far so good. Both boilers are on. None of them should fire because I just checked the water 60 degrees from solar today so that boiler doesn't need to fire. That boiler won't fire either because no stat is paired. I've got power to my wiring center so I have to pair the stats now and see if the setup works. So I've run around the house I've paired all those stats with their wiring centers, got one left over because one will have to be hardwired. All the wiring centers operate independently, so when one pump comes on, it's only one pump, not the whole house. And you can see boiler nicely ticking along on weather comp. Now, right now, the uh, flow temperature is 48 degrees. Most of the work is done now, and to sum up what we've done, we used to have 60 kilowatt of boilers doing both heating and hot water on an S plan so they both had to run at 70 degrees I split the system into two separate systems so this boiler only does central heating and is weather compensated so it reacts to the external temperature and adjusts its flow temperature depending on what the temperature outside is and that allows the boiler to run at much higher efficiency at much lower temperatures as well when we used to have two boilers the minimum modulation of the system was 12 kilowatts now the minimum modulation is 6 kilowatts, which is around a quarter of the heat loss of the property. So that boiler will stay and condense for way longer than two boilers could do together, gaining us extra efficiency. On hot water side, we're using just one boiler now for hot water, charging just one of the two cylinders. I've decommissioned the cylinder, I've drained it, I isolated it. It stays in place in case it's needed in the future. On a gas boiler on hot water priority, we allow 35 liters per person. So this setup is good for up to seven people and there are only two people staying at this property. So absolutely no need to be wasting energy charging 500 liters of water. On top of that, 
I've reconnected this solar diverter and it's charging this cylinder in sequence. First the top uh, immersion heater, then the bottom immersion heater. I've also put new timers, uh, one programmer for hot water and one domestic hot water circulation because that circulation can deplete the cylinders pretty rapidly if pipe is uninsulated, which is quite often the case in those properties. And there's really no way to insulate them now. So I'm only pulsing the secondary circulations three times a day for about 10 minutes. I am also timing my hot water the way that PV has a chance to charge the cylinders in the day and the cylinders only top tap at night or in the evening and never in the daytime. I only run it for about 20-30 minutes when secondary circulation kicks in so it doesn't deplete the cylinder fully. We've also upgraded controls. The old controls were overshooting quite often. So if you said 21 degrees, uh, once the boiler stopped supplying hot water to the manifolds, the room would continually gradually raise in temperature to 24, 25 degrees. It's kind of common on underfloor heating if not controlled correctly. We also have fewer of those controls, uh, still more than I would like to because we've got 10, we removed 16 and we installed 10 thermostats. The reason being, it's first of all, it's a really large property, uh, five bedrooms, three reception rooms, five bathrooms, really massive two floor uh, lobby. And the back of the house is south facing and has a lot of glass, so it gets a lot of solar gain and gets uh, warmed up that way. So we need to be able to limit quite a few rooms at the property so they do not get too hot once the sun comes out. The question now is, what kind of savings can we expect? What I'm gonna do, because I still have to come back to replace 35 flow setters on the manifolds because someone broke every single one of them. I've ordered them, that's gonna take about a week before they arrive. And I will come back and in a week's time, I will compare this picture to what I'm gonna see when I come back and we'll see what the consumption is. But I can tell you right now, in 24 hours after installing the system, because the job took a few days, the consumption on heating and hot water, because heating is already on, was around 50 to 55 kilowatt hours a day. Previous consumption was around 65 to 70,000 kilowatt hours per annum, which gives an average daily consumption of 190 kilowatt hours. So we might as well have quartered the use of gas here. But obviously one day is not a representative sample. We will compare those figures in a week or two weeks time. And then we will also revisit this job next year.